Hi guys, I'm so excited to be here um, and see all of your beautiful faces. Um, I'm Misha. I am a first year medical student over at Kansas City University. Um, a little backstory about me, I went to Florida Atlantic University, uh, which is in South Florida. And I also took a gap year where I worked as a medical assistant. And the following cycle, I got accepted into medical school and we're almost done with the first year, which is insane. For sure, for sure. Thank you so much for that answer. And someone asked in the Q&A as well, a question directed towards Misha. So I'm gonna give her the chance to answer too. And it's really about a question uh, about a, a student who's really interested in the DO process and any advice to develop an application that really is tailored towards DO schools. And what's the difference really between MD and DO schools, if any? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I just, Quick before I start answering that question, why I chose DO, I am really interested in internal medicine and potentially sports medicine in the future. So the only difference between an MD and a DO, we have the same exact training. DOs just have additional training in another field called osteopathic manipulative therapy. And essentially, if you guys are interested in what that is, I always explain it like this when I'm talking to anybody or like my simulated patients and OSCEs and we have to explain what OMT is. Your body has the power to heal itself, right? You like when you cut yourself, when you get a paper cut, right? You heal on your own. You don't have to do anything for it. Essentially OMT in more chronic like musculoskeletal problems or um, like lymphatic drainage problems that a patient might have we as physicians use your own body and manipulate it in a certain way so it can help itself heal. And um, if you're really interested in osteopathic manipulative therapy or kind of learning about that field more, I would highly recommend shadowing a DO. And if you're deciding to apply to DO schools, when you are applying, apply and talk about DO because a lot of the secondary applications will ask why DO, right? Like why medicine and why DO specifically? Really understand what osteopathic medicine is. It's medicine, it's MD medicine with an additional training of osteopathic manipulative therapy. So it's not like sometimes when I do some reviews of patients um, with secondary essays, I see that they're kind of off on what OMT is and osteopathic medicine is. So if you are interested in going to the field, again, shadow a DO, reach out to DO students and see what the vibe is, what is osteopathic medicine, and um, when you can really articulate why you want to go into this field, I think you're much more likely to get acceptances into DO programs as well. The next question I have is for Misha, and it's going to be a little bit about gap years. So I see this question pop up, and um, you mentioned that you had taken a gap year. So what was your thought process around wanting to take one, or what was your thought process around the importance of a gap year for your application, and what would you recommend to students who are thinking about taking a gap year? Yeah, that's a great question. This is like my favorite question ever, because I think gap years are probably the best thing that you can do, not just for yourself, but, and for your application, but just to develop you as a person overall. In my gap year, I was a medical assistant, right? So I got a lot of work experience. And I will say getting clinical experience or work experience in general, that's something that you can't learn in a classroom. And it's really going to stand out when you start applying to medical school, when you start going into interviews. Um, pretty much, I think in, my God, I think in almost every interview that I had, they talked about my clinical experience. And I will say going forward into medical school, when you have to do clinical skills and clinical assessments and physical exams, those skills that you learn within your gap year, if you do decide to do clinical experience like I did, are going to be key. Like that is going to make you stand out from the rest of your class. Also in general, like I had mentioned previously, it just, it makes you more of an adult right? Because you're going into medical school, you guys are going to become physicians, like this is an amazing step that you guys are taking towards your career. And, um, you know, we got to mature up a little bit. So if you are thinking about taking a gap year, I always recommend it. I think we're so focused on like, 
I'm on this timeline, right? I have to get into medical school by the time I'm 21. I have to graduate by the time I'm 25. I have to become a, like, there is no timeline at all. Your journey is your journey. I have friends in medical. Let me tell you guys, I'm 24 years old. I'm probably one of the youngest people in my class. My friends are like 28, 29, 35, right? They've had years of career experience and lives before medical school. There is no um, one set schedule, right? There is no schedule for you to get into medical school. So if you're thinking about taking a gap year, I think it's one of the best things that you guys can do for yourselves. I love it. Yeah, everyone has their own timeline. And I feel like oftentimes we're trying to rush to get to the next level from being in high school to college to medical school to residency to fellowship to being in attending and it's this lifelong journey really so it's important to kind of slow down and make sure every time every step along the way you're enjoying the process. Um, so I love that answer. Um, I'm going to ask each one of you starting with Misha. You know, for someone who's sitting here watching, what is the single biggest takeaway that you want to give to somebody who's here right now, who's a pre-med, who wants to become a physician, who wants to be in your shoes in medical school? What's the biggest piece of advice in one minute or less? We're going to go through everybody. And that's the last question. You got it. Okay. Don't give up. Do not give up. Even if you don't get in this cycle, even if you don't get in next cycle, it does not matter. Keep pushing at this. This is a hard process. The fact that you guys have taking the time out of your day to be here, you've put in so much energy into your education and you're doing what needs to be done to get where we are, you will make it. So don't put unnecessary pressure on yourself. Just understand that your time is going to come and keep pushing. Being a pre-med is one of the hardest parts, I will say. Um, and you guys are doing excellent. The fact that you're here today is incredible and I'm proud of each and every single one of you. Great, um, Megan? Okay, you said one minute and I got so, I felt so much pressure, but basically I think everyone's going to hear this from, it's like the most basic piece of advice, but don't compare yourself to other people. Whenever I first started college, people were talking about volunteering at the nearby hospital, hospital and I was like, okay, when did y'all even, when did y'all even interview to get that spot? Like, I didn't even know there were applications for this. And so that was, you know, it felt really weird starting college off like that, but I eventually got all my clinical stuff. I did perfectly fine. And same for medical school. When you get here, there's people going to be bragging about research, about shadowing and, you know, like just block them all out, block out the haters, block out the non-haters, block out whoever, and just focus on yourself and your journey and what you yourself are interested in. Find your mentors, find your people, and you will be fine. Thank you so much, Claire. Yeah, this is all great advice. I was like trying to think of something different. Um, but somebody commented this quote on one of my posts and it was like, closed mouths don't get fed. And I really love the idea behind that. And I definitely think I utilize that many times throughout my pre-med journey because I didn't have any physician connections at the time and I always needed to reach out to other people for help and cold email and same thing when you're applying to medical schools and if you're waitlisted or if you haven't gotten an interview yet send a letter of interest tell the med schools that you're interested in them and leverage your existing acceptances to maybe get scholarships at other schools like the worst thing that people can do is either ignore you like not see your email or say no and it can't hurt to ask and definitely being able to reach out and put myself out there has helped me get to med school now. Awesome. And now the last one is for Sana. Wow, you guys said everything perfectly. Um, I just want to reiterate that there are people that are rooting for you. We don't know you individually, but we're rooting for you. There are free resources out there. There are mentors out there. Please take advantage of that. You are doing so much and being such a go-getter by being on this panel today you're being a go-getter with every email that you send even if someone doesn't respond and i think that this med school app journey is so hard when it's hard remind yourself that it's supposed to be hard you're not supposed to be handling it perfectly it's not going to be easy and there is a light at the end of the tunnel um so yeah we're just all really proud and excited of you so keep doing your thing keep showing up and tell your story authentically and whatever brought you to medicine is what's meant to get you into medicine. Those were such fantastic answers. This was clearly so helpful. Uh, we really want to thank all the panelists for being on today, for taking time out of your weekend to help answer direct questions. 
Uh, we got through so many questions. Obviously, everyone is going to be following you on social media and asking more. Um, this was just an incredible, incredible panel. Thank you all so much.